Never asked that. <laughs> They're uh, <laughs> Brother Barry used to print a thing in the Old Faith Contender every once in a while about some church um, story, and it it this uh, this guy <laughs> causing trouble in church and all this, and finally he stands up and says, "I'll have what I deserve from y'all." And some old deacon that's hard to hear and said, "What did you say, brother?" He said, I'll have my just desserts. He said, oh, brother, you don't want your just desserts. That would be hell. <laughs> that yeah. would be hell, because that's all you and I deserve is hell. And preached him a little sermon there on hell, and the old boy that, that struck the chord, he sat down and said, you're right, brother. Go ahead. I'm, I'm a troublemaker. Do what you will. Well, that, he used to print that about once every two years, that story. No, excuse me a minute. I think I need a drink of water. <laughs> there was a, after today's meeting, uh, uh, I don't know, I guess I was doing something and listening, but uh, a thing come up about a, a history of the Welsh revival of uh, 1904 to 1905. So it was a plan along and I didn't, didn't, I usually shut that kind of stuff off, you know, but um, there was mention in uh, over in Wales, which, which I'm Evans, my, that's my last name. Got a lot of Welsh background there, but uh, uh, they said it was a uh, Calvinistic Methodist church. I've heard of it before. And I often wanted to meet somebody from there, but I never have. I wonder if you ever run across the run across the Calvinistic uh, Methodist. I never met one. I've heard some. A friend of mine say he had heard of that before, but I think it was like uh, guys that it was from on Whitfield's side of the equation that that were the Methodist movement because he was with John Wesley for a while, and they had a split, and it was over Calvinism, and Whitfield took the uh, predestinarian position. So it's probably their descendants, although I don't know of any congregations in my area. I was in the regular Methodist church for years, and then I left, I got out of there around 2008. Thank goodness. Because <laughs> it's like a, like, a, like a Presbyterian pastor once told me, he said, well, the Methodists, they got a Bible and a book of discipline, and that's about it. <laughs> they didn't have any theological, basically, they have no theological depth at all. And from what I've heard, it's only gotten worse from there. Uh, I don't, I don't know any Methodists that believe anything dogmatically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You might find one out in the country somewhere that might. Maybe so. <laughs> but I'd bet they're all died off. Most, most everyone I've talked to, had, hadn't been that many, but most I talked to was like, well, everything is okay. I mean, everybody's going to the same place. We're all working for the same goal. Uh, nothing really. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me. Uh, the last sermon I, when I was in the Methodist church, the last sermon I listened to, beginning of 08, I believe, we had a new pastor come in. And he preached a sermon where he said, well, they used to talk about the depravity of man, but now we have to uh, focus on we're all in this together. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, <laughs> where in the Bible is that? And I was like, uh, I, I, I kind of just quietly, I didn't say anything. It's just after it was over, I never went back. <laughs> and say, I blame you. <laughs> then one big, now it's one big pile of depravity. They might not know it. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. The um, the sermon that I remember the most when I was going to the Methodist Church back in the seventies. He read it out of Red Book magazine. <laughs> Ouch. I'm not lying. Now, I may be because it could have been Ladies Home Journal. 
<laughs> but the lady sitting next to me in the choir recognized what it was. So she had got hers the same time. And it was the December issue, and it was Christmas, and it had a little Christmas story in there. And he read it to us, oh. hid it under his notes mm. oh. by the pulpit Bible, and was reading out of either Ladies' Home Journal or Red Book Magazine. You need to reconsider. <laughs> you need to reconsider your ministry if you're doing that. <laughs> who, call, who, who, who called me to this? <laughs> he was. Um, uh, at at one time, Methodist Church there at home uh, had a Wednesday night service, but he, uh, when this one came, he canceled that because that's when the Mason's Lodge met was Wednesday nights. Ooh, that's not good. So he had to, he had me at the lodge meeting. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to have to stand up for the Methodist on East. Eastern Shore, Maryland. Uh, we could be coming back from a uh, weekend at the beach. We would always stop at the Methodist place because they had the best food. <laughs> they, could, they could fry chicken and make corn. It would just melt in your mouth. Brother, that's <laughs> blasphemy. Baptist, Baptist, that's blasphemy. Baptist, Baptist didn't women. have much mission, but uh, uh, they Methodist. <laughs> I will say that. Stop there to get fed. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, let, don't let the Baptist been, women hear you say that. That's well, right. I, I may be in trouble. Can I read you my Bible verse? <laughs> oh, hey, would, could you have a minute just to let Angelo read his Bible verse? Oh, for yes. Me? yes sure. Go, ahead. Go ahead, Angelo. <laughs> soul of the earth i think he was trying to get across and um we'll work on his delivery a little more he's he don't have his granddaddy's uh power of uh hooping and hollering but uh, <laughs> uh maybe, maybe he'll deliver it he'll get delivered yeah. someday thank, thank you my, my yeah. sister wants to, my sister wants to say hi hi Hi. Hello, Hello there. Hi. Hi, Fiona. Thank you. <laughs> He's got something to say, too. <laughs> Look at her. It's like a baby. Mm -hmm. And I also got a story to tell you. <laughs> That's good. All right, well, th thank you, Angelo. I th and Hi. thank you guys for listening listening on. That's precious. Oh, that's great. Yeah, uh, I, I I I read the promises, and um, all I can do is what the Lord lays on my heart. Yep. Back to Bible, and we 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 work on it. 
but uh, it's always spirit of God that comes and visit visitates on them and saves them. And I realize that, and I pray for them. But uh, children is um, if that don't if children don't humble you, I don't think anything in the world would. Sister Vicky, uh, do you agree with that? I definitely <laughs> agree with that. I've had a a few humbling minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I was uh, when I was raising my family, I was uh, I was younger and I didn't know all I know today. And uh, it, it's a different hey. perspective in raising kids when you when your grandparents. Racy. Well, the children aren't raised like we were raised. And like we raised ours. So we're, we're kind of, I know it's a different thing. I don't know. My grandchildren are not, they don't do like my children did. But I don't know whether that's just, well, I know it's meant to be, but it kind of worries me. You know. I think it's because we done got old and they wear us out. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably because they got grandparents that spoil them. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and blame me. I I'm good at I can take all the blame you can give me. I know that's what go. goes on. I know that's what happens with my kids. My my parents don't treat my kids anything like they treated us. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> my grandkids or my kids get away with anything with my grandparents. <laughs> my oldest daughter says, Where is my mother and daddy? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I said, We're grandparents now. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. Well, they ain't no good things, Paul. My, my parents, they just say, well, we really didn't like you. We like them, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, we can send them home. We don't have to put up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I get to mind. Mm. Your youngest is better than you were. <laughs> well, that's, that's probably definitely true, though, with mine. Uh, that's, that's true with me. I was thinking about being an uncle so I can give kids a hug, but at the end of the day, they go home with mom and dad. Now yeah. I have to pull them after that. <laughs> you, you can stir them all up, get them all wound up full of sugar, and send them home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. But you better change their deities before you send them home. Yep. <laughs> yep. My, my kids tell me that. Uh, Mom and I, we've we've just gotten too, uh, I don't know, just kind of lax a daisy on our old age. And I told them, no, we just flat wore out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh mercy! Yeah. Well, I know one thing I learned. My kids will definitely tell my parents anything that they've heard us say. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to watch wow. out what you say in front of the kids. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, anyway, what I was getting at uh, about that thing to come at the video of YouTube or whatever it was called that followed uh, Brother Lackey there. Uh, did you put that on there or does that just pop up? I hadn't put nothing on. It must have just popped up. I got There's the same. Welsh, Welsh, Welsh. Did you get it, John? Yeah, I got the same thing about the Methodists and I read it for a little bit and just gave it up because it really didn't interest Methodists don't interest me. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a Methodist meeting house once and I was cured. <laughs> <laughs> they had, they had I went to college on. <laughs> Only one dose. <laughs> cured. <laughs> and of course I'm walking out all mad and I could hear Brother Lackey in my head saying, well, who told you to go there? <laughs> I never went again. <laughs> I, I think it's a different breed of people than it was back in the uh, in 1904 05 Welsh revival. They were what, what this story was about, and they were talking about a man named Evan, somebody, something or other. And boy, there was a lot of Evanses in, in Wales back then. I'm going to get over there someday and look around. Yep. But... Still are a lot of evidences in Wales. But they're not as mean as me, are they? I don't know. I, um, I'm trying to think if, if I met any when I was in Wales. Uh, 
No, I didn't meet any any directly, uh, but uh, I not not that I spent any time with anyway. Um, I'm trying to think what uh, what that last name was. Goodness gracious, I thought I'd never forget. They own a valley there on uh, in the Black Mountains of Southern Wales. The house was on the 1380 tax rolls. Mm. Wow. They've been for, they've been new, for a while. <laughs> the, the new part of the house was built in the 1700s. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. My uncle, uh, my uncle, who was in Evans, of course, he, he was uh, all into looking at this genealogy. Had somebody pay somebody a high price to get to all this, all this uh, literature together. And he went over there and he, he visited on his closed been kinfolk. I don't know where they were or not. He thought they was, but he says that they were living in a, a uh, place looked like a cave with a dirt floor and the eyes was punched out and got scars all over them, fighting and <laughs> carrying on. And he, so he went to Scotland and fished the uh, cricks up there and uh, played golf. <laughs> he, he turned his back <laughs> on his skin folks. But um, that's that's the story he told. So uh, I guess there's Jones. rough people, rough people any place you go. Nellie Jones, that was her name, Miss Jones. And uh, that's the other common name in Wales is Jones, Evans oh, yeah. and Jones. I know yep. quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. they, um, when I was uh, <clears throat> coming back to uh, Brighton on the train, It was an old railroad car. It looked like probably from the early 1900s at the newest. It looked like mahogany wood panels on the inside. And there was three guys younger than me on there. Two of them were talking to each other in Welsh. And when, the, when they got off, the other one said, uh, started talking to me. He said, uh, asked me if I was American. I said, yeah. He said, well, uh, not all of us over here are like these guys. They were communists. They were Welsh separatist communists. They wanted Wales to break off from England and become a communist state. Hmm. And uh, uh, it, it was real interesting talking to this guy uh, about stuff like that for the, I don't know, half hour, hour, we were on the train together. And then when he got off, I was by myself till I got to Brighton, another hour. Well, the Welshmen are given to uh, not to take authority over nobody. I, I will say that. I tell you we what, they show saying. We got a we got a gene in us or something in us that you, you start to lay the Pope's law down or the law down on me, man. I squirm like a I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not bragging, it's just the way the way you are, you know. But uh, I, I understand I understand a little bit about uh, how you might but where where you go is, or where you let me just say where you led, uh, that's uh that's outside my jurisdiction. I um uh, I where I stayed up there is supposedly the site of the ancient Alcon Baptist Church. And the ruins there, the archaeologist told her was uh, that that was just a barn. That wasn't the church. That was a shed or a barn. Yeah, it's ancient, all right. Probably dates back to 
uh, a thousand or before, but no, that's no church. That's just a barn or a shed. That's all that was. And realize the old Welsh Christians weren't going to have the ostentatious uh, meeting places of the Roman Catholics. Yeah. See, they were looking for they were looking for oddballs. They were looking for things that we wouldn't have. So, so the Welsh they had a Christian church outside of Catholicism before the Reformation. Is that is that what what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. That uh, the Welsh opposed when Austin came over in the 600s. And um, I believe they stayed underground and actually existed right on through to the time that they could uh, hey. meet hey. openly. Okay. I never heard of that. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin Evans. There you go. History of the, history of the Welsh Baptist. Okay. I got to look that up. Yeah, uh, you can get it off of Google Books if you like to read online stuff. Okay. It, oh, I say Google Books. It's either on Google Books or archive.org, one or the other. And then there's uh, Joshua Thomas's History of the Welsh Baptist. Um, it's got another name, but uh, you'll know it when you see it uh, in, in Joshua Thomas's works. Sounds interesting. Yes, uh, it is both of them. You're you're not going to find any good history books down at your local bookstore. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's all Christian it, bookstore. <laughs> it's going to all be Protestant history that's skewed. Mm -hmm. Yep, sure is. Joshua it, Evans. Uh, Josh, no, Joshua uh, Thomas Benjamin oh. Evans. Okay, Thomas. Okay. Joshua Benjamin Thomas. Jo no, no, no. I'm no, sorry. No. I'm fumbling. Hang on now. It's Benjamin Evans, Benjamin History of the Welsh Baptist. Evans. History. And then Joshua Thomas has one as well. And I want to say it's a very similar name, History of the Baptist, particularly of Wales, something like that. Um you'll know it when you see it under joshua thomas's works yeah you even have to watch out when you're dealing with some of these histories of the waldenses and albigenses because some of them are written by protestants I got uh, Great. and Bro and they'll they'll try to uh, tell you that uh, that they sprinkle babies and all sorts of things like that. Hey, brother, do, do you think the uh, do you think the Welsh were the ones that influenced the Waldensians down in Piedmont? Probably. That's Probably. Kind of what, that's kind of I've what I was that. gathering. Like I say, I don't know how true this that is, but I have heard it and read it that that they sent missionaries, so called, uh, to back to the continent. So they could have. Um, personally, I think there were two streams of Waldenses, Waldensians. Um, I think there was the ones that, that started with Peter Waldo. But I think there was an older bunch as well. And in fact, I think I've mentioned it on here before that in Robinson's Ecclesiastical Researches, he says that amongst the Catholic writings that he had read, and Robinson learned something like to read eight languages to do those books, because he would not trust secondary sources. And he said uh, the earliest mention of the term Waldenses has nothing to do with the valleys of Piedmont. Rather, it has to do with the, um, oh, come on now, where are the best? The Pyrenees the, between France and Spain. Is it hmm? the Voudois? Is it the uh, No, he, got, he, he, he said they called them Waldenses. Oh, did they? But uh, yeah, because they would have been in Latin rather than because it's Catholic writings. 
yeah. rather than French. And uh, I got but he says book. in the Pyrenees that that they is the earliest mention he can find mm -hmm. of that. I was talking about a sect that existed in the Pyrenees. And what could have happened is some of those could have gone around through the uh, south of France to the north of Italy, to the Alps. They're used to living in the mountains. And if persecution came there, they would not be afraid to go somewhere else. But I would think they would look for some place they were familiar with, like where they came from, you know what I mean? Rather than become fishermen by the sea or something like that. Yeah, it's easy, mountains, if you got, it's easier to defend yourself in mountains if you know, know the terrain. True, quite true. I ordered that book, by the way, brother. Which one? The uh, uh, Robin Robbins, Robinson. Robert Robinson. Robert Good. Robinson. And yes. then, uh, the only one that I haven't ordered yet is the uh, one by Junius uh, Junior. Junior. Yeah. Now, that, that's John Allen, right? Uh, I was you, John Allen or John Stevens. It's one or the other. I think it's John Allen. Uh, that he's that pseudonym, Junius yeah. Junior. Okay, I was just making sure on that. Boy, I found some of those online. They were like $600 for them books. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you talk about, that's why I, my edition of the History of Baptism, I just downloaded it off archive.org. I, I found some of those. I found some of those that were fairly cheap, and I, I got the books coming uh, on the two other two that you give me. Uh, yeah. And everything. It's, it's kind of funny this conversation came up because I've been, I've been trying to study you know, everybody's <laughs> this whole Trinitarian thing has blossomed into a nightmare out here with all the people that I know. And uh, anyway, uh, I can believe it. Whenever they go to look at Welsh track or Welsh publications or anything like that, you know, most of them, whenever they first open things up, they're like, yeah, whatever, you know. But they don't no, no know any of the history. And so I'm kind of mm -hmm. trying to educate myself more on the on the history uh and everything and some of the some of the people that believe like we do and you know where all they came from and you know how far back you know some of their things uh can be found and uh and everything especially with some of these brothers that that i talked to because they put a lot of stock in in that you know oh we can't oh yeah we can't find that in history surely you know are you the only ones to know that you know got to be somewhere in history if it's the truth so. Oh, yes, absolutely. Got to be written down somewhere. Um, somebody put it in a confession. Right, right. I, so anyway, you know, I, I, I have been reading some of it though today, uh, some of the on online stuff of the uh, the one from uh, Junior's ju uh, Junior. Mm -hmm. and that was really good. Yeah, well, it's really stuff good. Some of there is real good, boy. Some of his declaration about who Christ is in there was 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 really good especially to be a uh whatever he was doing there to in front of these uh governmental people you know about liber liberty and and everything I, I thought that was pretty good yep absolutely he um um he was evidently a, a good orator yep. based on the way it's writ um we didn't I, have no he know. didn't have no affinity for Charles Wesley either. He just outright called him <laughs> he just outright called him an unbeliever or something like that. Which I would I would agree, but <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I can't figure out why Spurgeon wanted to defend John Wesley. Thirteenth apostle. That's what he called I him. Can't, I can't figure that. I bought Spurgeon's two Wesleys the week that that uh, Pilgrim Publications, old Bob Ross, put it out, I think. I mean, there was a, a Christian bookstore there in Fort Smith. So I'll tell you who owned it. Bill Lee's uncle owned it. Oh, yeah. And he stocked Spurgeon and all that stuff. And, and it had come out by Ross, and he had it, and I bought it. And I was never so disappointed. Do you remember the name of that bookstore? Christian Family Center. Christian Family Center. 
I'll it's not there anymore. Oh, it's not? I was thinking so no. I'd have to stop in there when I'm going through there every now and then. No, it ain't there anymore. Uh, the, 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 even where it was isn't there anymore. I may be mis misremembering, but it seems like I read in something about Spurgeon that he also refused to criticize uh, Dwight M Moody. He had him yeah. preach at the tabernacle. Yeah, he preached and, at his church. Yeah, and that was real disappointing to me. Yes, that's another one. When uh, one that always got me about old John is when uh, when he thought old top lady had died because he was sick and he told the story that uh, top lady had recanted all of the predestinarian doctrine and admitted he was wrong on his deathbed and uh, he had embraced Arminianism and said yeah. that. And top lady had to get up off his deathbed and go preach to tell him this is wrong. <laughs> These same doctrines that I've preached are doctrines that's a comfort now. <laughs> and he went back to bed and died a week later. Isn't that, isn't that when he said the notice of my demise is greatly over exaggerated? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. Brother Lackey, I wanted Yo. to ask uh, Robert Robinson's history of baptism. Yes. How much did you say it was? I'm sorry? How much did you say it was? I didn't. He said that okay. some copies were going for as high as $600. Yeah, uh, that, because, that, was, that was for the... Um, uh, that was for the uh, Junius Jun, uh, oh, Junior. Oh, that was for Junius Junior. Okay. Yeah. There is a book. There is a book publication. It's called Forgotten Books, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. They sell the history of baptism by Robert Robertson for nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, I ordered a used one today for I think it was fourteen dollars or sixteen dollars. Oh, that's uh, good. I that like was, Robert. That was that was in that was in great condition. So uh, that, I'm writing this fun. down. <laughs> Need to start getting some of these books you guys are referring to. I don't buy too many theological books anymore, but I do like to get history ones every now and then that, that has some of the stuff showing what people were talking about and believing in, in history in the, in the old, just to, just to know for one, but mm -hmm. especially whenever I'm talking with other men, like I have been that, that put so much stock in, if you don't see it in history, then, you know, you're making something new up, you know, it's nice well, to at least point to say there, you know, there was other people back here that did believe that. That don't make it the truth, though. I mean, this is true. Just shows and it's not, it's error, not a new error, idea. Error is as old as the truth. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, you can point to any erroneous doctrine and find that there's been a long line of people that's believed that for right. for age. I mean, just look at the Catholic Church. I mean, look how long they've been around. Oh, yeah. Just because they've believed something for all that time doesn't mean it to be truth, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> and so that's what I tell these brothers is, you know, just because you've got find some of these doctrines and these confessions, you know, there's some good things in some of those confessions, but brother, them, that's not infallible. And that's them, right. them men are, them men have the same propensities and presuppositions that all of us have. And mm -hmm. only God's word is true. Yeah, and amen. So, so I, mean, I might yeah. I, I might not have I might not have light on that subject that you might have, but you know don't come and try to correct me with a creed and a confession and a commentary by somebody and try to tell me I need to believe that because this guy said so. Yeah, you know yeah. if it's I can't be rooted in the word. Yeah, that's right. If I can't see it in God's word and only He can show it, you know, only He can give that light. And my, there was a there was a period I got so tired of hearing the apostolic fathers, the anti nicene fathers. These people would run there and quote something, and my my uh, uh my thoughts were to them. So what does that matter to me? Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I read some of those guys a while back, and it's like I told a friend of mine, Baptist friend of mine. I said you can you know you can read those, and you can find stuff a Catholic, a Orthodox, and a Protestant could latch on to and quote in context. It's almost like the old saying about Augustine, Protestants and Catholics both could tap into them and quote them in context. So it's kind of, it's the ancient church fathers were not all together on everything. It was kind of, nope. some of it kind of was all over the place. 
it hadn't been, you know, had one things weren't settled down a lot. So, you know, the Catholics and Orthodox try to use them to justify their positions, but really, if you look, it's it's not as smooth as, as they make it out to be. A lot of bad do the same thing, Brother John. Yeah. Just read, just read the Shepherd of Hermas. That was weird. I read part yeah. of it a while back. It was it was bizarre. <laughs> Enoch makes a lot more sense than than the Shepherd of Hermas, but. Uh, no, I, uh, I get ready to say, I think it's by Walter Bauer, who's the Bauer of the Bauer, Art, and Gingrich lexicon. And he wrote a book called Orthodoxy and Heresy in Earliest Christianity. And and it's just that. It's it's showing the, the origin of, of what was orthodox and what became uh, heterodox or heresy um, and how both of them operated side by side mm -hmm. and really depended on which side you was on depended on what, which side was orthodox and which side was heresy it, it's a very interesting book mm -hmm. I may not remember this exactly but I remember reading about uh, uh, oh, the British Prime Minister during World War II who am I thinking of Winston, Winston Churchill, Churchill. Churchill. He was asked by someone, uh, Mr. Churchill, do you think the atomic bomb is the most powerful thing in the world? He said, no, sir. They said, well, what is? He said, the truth. <laughs> he, said, he said, it's verifiable because there's been a host of error compassing it about daily and it's never touched it. <laughs> Boy, if he said that, he told the truth, didn't he? I may not remember the words exactly, but something to that effect. I remember reading another quote by him. He said, Americans can be counted on to do the right thing when they've exhausted all of the options. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> I can sympathize with that. <laughs> Me too. Well, I went on your advice to look at them confessions, London and, and second, third, all that stuff. So uh, I read, read every one of them, and uh, I was more interested in not what the confession was, but the, the text of the scripture that proved that, or what their, their basis of. And the, I read it, and I said, man, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. You can't find that in there. They won't give that proof text. The, the same proof text that speak to my heart didn't speak to their heart, I guess, or nope. they're trying to it could have been this, and, and I had this impression, and I, I don't want to accuse nobody of, of doing nothing, but I think they're trying to smooth it over for everybody. Did, did, did anybody else get that impression when you study them confessions? And well, some of them are, people? yes. The, the, uh, the second London admits that it is. It oh. admits that it's trying to show that that the Baptists uh, believe the same thing as the Protestants. Yep. Presbyterian, yeah. Well, and it's the, right there in it's right there in the preface. If 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 you read it, it's a spinoff. We be we be just as reformed as you are. Yep. Don't and, persecute us no more, please. And the New Hampshire hey, Confession like of Faith me. that that was whew, that watered it down almost all. Well, the Southern Baptists drove the nail in, but uh, the the Westminster or the uh, New Hampshire, you know, that's what a lot of Baptist churches around here, you know, even Sovereign Grace and uh, uh, landmark churches and all that kind of stuff all around here. That's what they, and most of them don't believe what's in that confession, but that's what they use to to constitute themselves around. I'll give that, you I'll give you a good example, and I'll probably create a controversy here, but. <laughs> Every, every single confession of faith I've read, and I, I admit I've not read them all, every one of them have a statement about believing in a general judgment. Mm -hmm. I do not. Yep. I know where you're coming from. But I will tell you that in my opinion, and this is what this is what most people I think forget. They think of a general judgment is you're gonna stand up there and you're gonna get rewarded or or 
unrewarded for what you've done. Mm-hmm. Baloney. Baloney. If you go, <laughs> if you go to a court of law, and that judge up there says not guilty, you're acquitted. Get him out of here. He's he's free. That's mm-hmm. just as much judgment as pronouncing guilt on the guilty and giving them a sentence. So I believe God's children, if they stand in judgment, it's not going to matter because all that's going to be is you're perfect because of Christ. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, if, Christ if, covers, if, where do they if, get the term general judgment? If, Who knows, brother? <laughs> it probably to make comes you right better. out there with the thir- three persons in the Trinity. <laughs> yeah, trying to make you a better person. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's easier to control somebody that's uh, fearful and uh, giving up their money and poor and and, uh, and held in ignorance. But God can't let his people be in ignorance. Sends the Holy Ghost to them. And, and the Holy Ghost speaks to your heart. Oh, and, and that's right. And you know it and you'll die for it. You don't <laughs> care. You know what the truth is. You only got to hear it once. All the voice of the I Lord speak. speaks yeah. to your heart. That's all that matters. Amen, all brother. Know, all I know, brother, Guys, is all my judgment wasn't in Christ, and I'm undone. Amen. I'm undone. That's it, yeah, right too. there. Well, and a lot of times they'll use the, you know, every man's going to have to give an account before the Lord. Well, if that if that's the case, every man, even the elect of God, it's going to be He did it for me. <laughs> that's the account we're going to give. Yeah, that's Amen. The hey, I, I gotta go, guys. I gotta be at work uh, here in a little bit, so I just want to say all goodbye. Right, it's been wonderful talking to you guys. Thanks. Good to have you. Do well. you John. Take care, brother. <laughs> you do too. I'm glad you guys made it for a short All time, right. anyway. All right. Good Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. So I had a I had a Catholic tell me, uh, he's a Roman Catholic, I guess is what he's called himself. He said, "We're uh, we believe the same thing, but uh, you just misguided." <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so don't listen to anything I say because the uh the numbers are on them guys side to so they say yeah but um it only takes one for old cliff lord jesus christ amen amen, yeah. amen. I, don't, I don't need him but uh, really cool. Yeah. I, I, I love how excited you get. <laughs> What's that? I said, I love how excited you get when you talk. <laughs> well, why can't I be? Hey, no reason at all. You just do her. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I love it, brother. I like to see somebody's passion about what he believes and what he thinks. But I'm misguided. <laughs> surely, like a, surely two surely two billion catholics can't be wrong right right <laughs> I, I don't know i wasn't i wasn't around giving the lord advice on how to make a per, uh what they call it the um lake of fire and, and and they're appointed to that destruction by the way in case you uh yeah. Guys, want to get uh, eating the Methodist chicken too much? <laughs> it, it is good though. It's good for the mouth. <clears throat> I feel it's like a thick. lot of people and a lot of people in the uh, the current political climate feel like you know you you hear of all the a lot of people are concerned that they're they're erasing history and they're wiping out history. But in all the conversation we're having here this evening, it seems like that's that ain't nothing new. You know, a lot of people in the media and things are up in arms about it. But you know, the, the, whoever said that the the victor writes the history. That's you know, true. and so yep. that's does. been a lot of what's going on is uh, because there's two billion or whatever the number varies so much. You know, that are members of that. It seems like it it's gotten rewritten over even before them. You know, they're, they're mm-hmm. trying to trying to rewrite when they were, what was it they, uh, when after the Lord was was uh, crucified, it was like now, you know, he's telling the soldiers, you all go and tell them 
that his, you know, some of his followers come and got him, you know, so, you know, they were trying to rewrite it right there, you know, and so the stuff that's going bought, on now. Trying to buy, they bought them off. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> they did. There, there's nothing new under the sun. That's yeah. probably the greatest proof of his resurrection I know of in the Bible. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, we got, a, we got, they talk about cover-ups and all that nowadays. That's, that's, that, there's nothing new under the sun. Nope, sure mm -hmm. isn't. My own experience has been when the crowd believes something, like look at the time of Christ, who were all yelling, crucify him. The crowd. Yep. Was the crowd. So that's yep. why I don't trust crowds. <laughs> and and what did they uh, what did they tell that man born blind that Jesus healed? He says uh, he said, "Well, why y'all ask me all these questions? Y'all want to believe in him?" He said, "They said, well, what are you talking about, man? Does any of the the priests, the Sanhedrin, the the muckety muck, do any of them follow him? And if if you're somebody, you ain't gonna follow that carpenter's son." No, absolutely talking not. Talking about numbers, I, I'm Why reminded. Do what? Talking about <laughs> numbers, I'm reminded of what Christ said about the Pharisees. You can pass land and sea to make one more profile. Yeah. <laughs> we're all after. We got the most. We got the bigger crowds. Uh, and mm -hmm. people will tell you right now, well, you ain't nothing. You got a few little folks that meet down there. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Amen. They, I, I've they've told me that personally. I've had, oh yeah, I've had people say that about our little small church. <clears throat> Some woman said to me because she wanted to come to the um, Welsh tract in Huntington, and she said, "How many members are there?" I said, "About seven or eight. That's all. Yeah, that's all. That's all the Lord gave us. Yeah, so that's all." <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. You know, when you think of it, when you think of it, it won't but eight on the ark either. Right. It, won't, it, right. won't it won't before come out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. And one of them didn't go all the way. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> what the woman was it? Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you even look at the Lord, you know, here you have the best orator who, who knows the subject better than anybody else, who knows mm -hmm. the hearts of every man and what they have need of, who mm -hmm. could be a better preacher. He is the best preacher. And yet there were many who, whenever they heard him, turned away and said, that's a hard saying. Who can, who can hear it, man, and never walked with him again. And then there were others that whenever they looked at him, they thought he was ignorant and just, you, who, can anything good come out and come out of Galilee or Nazareth? Can anything Nazareth. Good come out of that? Yeah. And so, I mean, look, he had 12 guys and 120 by the time he's going to the cross. Well, I'll tell you, John six, large crowds were flocking after him and he told them the truth, what we believe really, what he yep. teaches us. Mm -hmm. They all left to but the 12. Uh huh. And when Christ said, "Will you also go away?" I don't think he was. Oh, will y'all go leave too? I don't think that's what he meant. No. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I think he was saying, "Y'all, y'all going away too? We'll just go right ahead." <laughs> you know, if God don't keep you, you can't be kept. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but they said, "No, you have the words of life." Yeah. Yeah. Right. Eternal, eternal life. They know. Yes. Amen. Oh, Thank you, Brother Clay. The truth draws or drives away. Yes, it does. One thing I learned early on uh, is that, you know, I don't beg people whenever they come and say, we have a problem with what you're preaching here, what you're teaching there. If they don't have, if they don't want to come and discuss it around the word, the word of God, but they just want to say, I just think you're wrong and, and we're going to have to leave your church or whatever. I don't beg them. I don't go after them and run. I just, you know, well, I'm sorry to hear that. You're sure welcome to, to, to go. If you think that's what you need to do. And we pray the Lord take you to, to a place that got the truth. Yep. 
you don't think this I is it. I may, be, I may be wrong, but uh, I've had people tell me, well, I stay down here at this Armenian church because I think I can do some good, and the Spirit's leading me to stay there. I always, maybe I'm wrong, I pat my Bible and ask me to turn to the page and show me where the Spirit does that. <laughs> Amen. And I, I usually just Amen. saw it, but they can't find it. Nope. Revel Revelation 18 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye may not be partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. Yep. Amen. That's Amen. why I, that's why I've quit. I, I listen, I, I, my family that's that still goes to Armenian churches, they want me to come to this and that. And then I just have to tell them, you know, I've had to take a stand and say, I'm not stepping foot again in another church that doesn't preach the truth. I'm not, Amen. I'm not Amen. doing that. Even if that makes hard feelings, I'm sorry, but I have to stand in, in the convictions that, that God has given me and on the word that he says, you know, come out from among them, be separate, don't partake. Anytime you go and have hold hands with them in their things, that's just partaking of their sins. Yep. Mm -hmm. Their sins of, of false gospels, their sins of a false Jesus, their sins of you know, clip, He's not faulting you eating that message of food. <laughs> hey, that, that, that's between him and the lord i'm not gonna throw judgment on him i, I told you all about what happened to me on that facebook group of the one of the reformed baptist groups they somebody put up the question now you've moved to this new town and you can attend either a Southern Baptist church that's Armenian, but they are Baptist and they hold to the Baptist distinctives. Or there's a Presbyterian church down here that preaches grace, but they sprinkle babies, and et cetera, et cetera. Which one do you go to? Yeah. Oh, and most of them were saying go to the Presbyterians and others. A few were saying go to the Southern. I come up and said, stay home. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Stay home. Why do you have to go to either one of them? Because one of them perverts the gospel of Christ and the other one perverts the ordinances. I don't right. want to be with either one of them. That's right. The guy mm -hmm. said, uh, when faced with two evils, choose neither. That's right. And they kicked me out of the group. Didn't even tell me they were doing it. They just did it. I mean, of course, it, it didn't help that I, right before then I had quoted Brother Pound to them. Brother Wayne, uh -huh. and asked them. Everybody was putting in their two cents on on. Somebody asked a question about a book or about a subject, and they were giving them all these books, and they were all Presbyterians, Independents, um, Puritans, Episcopalians, whatever. And I said, you know, it's awful strange that one would send someone to the breast of the whore of Babylon thinking they'll find milk for God's children. <laughs> did, they, did they all amen you? Oh, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> that, that, I guess I was put on notice for that one. And then when I told them to stay home and not go to the Southern Baptist Armenians or the Presbyterians, that was just yeah. too much. And they a, guy, me out. a guy once told me, he said, well, we believe the Bible. I said, that's good. What does the Bible say? <laughs> he didn't have any answers for that either. Just believe the Bible. Uh, <laughs> that's Campbellite position, isn't it? That's yeah, that same yeah. position as Campbellite. We've got no creed but Christ, no book but the Bible. <laughs> mm. Amen. If you want to really get uh, technical about things and you think, well, I, maybe I really don't believe right, go to a funeral. Mm. Well, there's a lot of people there, and then that preacher gets up there, so to speak, and you think, my Lord. If it's not the way we believe, then I'm going to bust hell wide open. Mm -hmm. I had never been to many funerals as a young youngster. Mm -hmm. And when, uh, when Bill Lee's daddy died, I, I went to his funeral. And the Southern Baptist, First Baptist Church preacher at Paris, Arkansas conducted the funeral. Of course, he knew what Bill believed. <laughs> so he gave an altar call at the funeral. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yes. I'm serious. I'd never heard the like or seen the like, and 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 the the preacher that preached my grandmother's funeral was a was a Campbellite. He didn't even do that. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, man, I mean, I uh, just was a uh, jaw down on my chest. And uh. I had uh, one of our members passed away a few years ago, and uh, she had asked me why she was sick. She said, you know, if I if I pass at my funeral, I want you to preach a sovereign grace message because there's going to be a lot of people there that aren't, that don't believe that. And I, I want them to, I want you to preach a sovereign grace message there. And so uh, she was also, she was also a native American and uh, uh, they had some dealings with, with the tribe, but they didn't, be, you know, they didn't hold to a lot of the native American belief stuff, you know, mm -hmm. they, they were believers, but anyway, um, so anyway, time came and we was ha having the funeral and they, before, before our church got started here in Joplin, um, they were going to another church right down the road from us called Grace Baptist Church, but they are Armenian as they come. They don't know what, <laughs> nothing about grace. Well, anyway, uh, they'd been going there for, I guess, a couple of years or something or a year or so. And, uh, well, anyway, that pastor showed up at their, at their funeral, you know, came to their funeral. And uh, he was sitting towards the back. And as I was preaching, and uh, I started preaching about predestination, and I started preaching about election um, and everything, he just stood straight up, looked right at me, and turned around and walked out the back door. And uh, I finished I finished my sermon. Then he came back in. And uh, whenever they all came to view the body, I was standing down beside the casket, and they were all coming around. Of course, I don't. I don't like to stand down there because they come shake your hand telling you how good a job you did. But uh, <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the Indian folks was told by uh, the lady's husband, uh, our member's husband, you know, that she didn't want any Native American ritual to be done at her funeral. <clears throat> and sure enough, man, that tribe chief there, she, it was a woman came down with these eagle feathers and started doing all this stuff over her with these eagle feathers and shoved those eagle feathers down in her stiff hands and was saying, doing a bunch of hooping and hollering. <clears throat> and boy, you could see that his face turned red as a beat. Boy, he was mad. And then whenever they were coming down, the funeral director was there and then I was standing right beside it. And whenever they got to me, they just kind of looked at me and turned around and walked off didn't shake my hand or say anything to me or anything like that but i in in my sermon i preached about predestination and election and i told them that uh, all all other gospels are, are false gospels and that there's only one gospel and there's only one christ and one savior and uh those indians they didn't you know and i don't have anything against them but the ones that were tribal that held to a lot of the tribal beliefs uh and everything boy they 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 got pretty pretty rude and upset after it was all over but that grace that grace baptist preacher yeah he uh he just got stood straight up right in the middle of the sermon and walked out and i could see him, the windows that was out there he just was standing out there he didn't it wasn't like he got a phone call or anything he was just standing out there as soon as it was done he turned around and walked back in and sit down brother michael i see you have the ability to make him walk the aisle too oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Well, you, just, you know, you just you know, have to get your direction straight. You need to get them to walk up it instead of out. Oh, yeah. I won't have to remember that one, brother. <laughs> now, we preachers, we got that golden hand. If you come down and shake our hands, that's your ticket to heaven, you know. Yeah. Free yeah. grace. <laughs> going to be a little short, I'm afraid. Yeah. Brother yeah. Michael. They probably wouldn't like the heaven they wound up in for shaking my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, Brother John. I'm sorry. I, I, I have to apologize to you. I saw a post in Facebook, and I thought you were going to lose your congregation, lose your church. You were going to get thrown out. And then later on, I read, oh, that happened a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, that was back, <laughs> that was back in 2010. I got fired when I became the pastor of the church here. Uh, my work, I told them I was moving to Joplin, which most of my work was up in this area. 
And uh, I told them that I was going to be moving during my vacation and they didn't have a problem with, they said, as long as I keep up with my work, that it was fine. But uh, whenever I came back from my vacation and moving, they called me into the, uh, the office and said, well, we heard you moved to Joplin on your vacation. I said, well, yeah, we've discussed this. And they said, we, we don't remember that. And they just flat out lied. They just said that they don't remember any conversation and that, mm -hmm. uh, Anyway, so they ended up firing me for conflict of interest for starting to pastor the church. And uh, we had just moved here, didn't know anybody here, didn't, you know. And uh, uh, so I immediately started looking for a job, praying to the Lord to give me something. And he ended up giving me a job doing what I was doing there uh, with better pay, better benefits. And listen, the guy that I work for, he's great. He, uh, hey. he, he lets me, he told me. He said that uh, <clears throat> we'll work your schedule around anything that you need to do as far as your church is concerned. Right. Right. Wow. And, man. and he has, he's been faithful to do that. And listen, uh, the Lord has blessed the business. I think because of him honoring the Lord in that, because he told me when he hired me, he was looking for somebody that was, that was a Christian. And uh, now I, I've come to see that. I don't know, necessarily know if he's a believer or not, because he's pretty squirrely on, you know, a lot of things and he doesn't tr really, they don't go to church and, you know, anything like that. But, uh, the guy does at least, you know, have some sort of a, you know, uh, uh a conscience that says, you know, treat the Lord, right. <laughs> and treat the people of the Lord. Right. And, uh, for, for, uh, Israel and Joseph's sake, correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I couldn't, I couldn't help but think, you know, that the, my, the, my immediate boss there, when I worked over in the Tulsa area, uh, you know, he used to always rail on me about being a preacher and, uh, talking about Christianity and stuff like that. And he said, if you want a real religion, go over to Tunisia where I was at them people there, they really believe what they say they believe, you know, but, uh, anyway, uh, they were all the time railing on me about being a preacher and, and stuff like that. And, and uh, then, like I said, whenever they fired me, <clears throat> I came over here and then totally opposite here, this guy here said, you know, we want a guy like this. And, you know, anytime that you have to go preach at a Bible conference or a funeral or be with somebody that's sick or whatever the case might be, you know, as <laughs> long as you can get your work done, we can work around that, your preaching schedule. And he has been faithful to do that for 11 years now. That's a great and, question. Uh, and, and then after the first year that I come to work there, uh, his book of business doubled. The second year I was there, it doubled again, and it doubled again the third year I was there. And, uh, you know, it's just, I mean, it is amazing wow. seeing the Lord bless the business. Amen. And just the opposite, the, the company that I worked for, they, they was a nationwide business. This was a little family-owned company that I work for now. The company I came from, there was a fam or a, a nationwide business, and they had many offices across the United States. And the Tulsa office was their second highest producing office. And within four years of me leaving there, they had dwindled down to the place where they ended up having to shut that shut that place down. The guy that fired me, uh, that lied, that said that he doesn't remember having the conversation about me coming to pastor here. The Lord, the Lord took his dad like a week after, uh, after he did that to me, took his dad and then struck him down with cancer. Oh. Mm. And, uh, you know, I just keep thinking, you know, where the scriptures say, <laughs> or told Abraham, I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse those that curse you. And, uh, I can only think that, you know, I, I, I I'm not saying, I don't know if that's why the Lord did it, but right. He surely did. He made that, he made that company that, you know, didn't care anything about the Lord and his business. It, it, it just dwindled them away. Matter of fact, those people that was involved there, they ended up moving to the Oklahoma city office and the Oklahoma city office dwindled down. They're just about to shut it down now. Mm. There's no coincidences in a universe run by God. That's right. Right. That's right. I, Brother Michael. Yes, sir. I I guess I have to be a whole lot nicer to you now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, touch not God's anointed. 
I'm just kidding, brother. I don't believe that's what the I Bible know, says. I know. I'm just I started to say that, Michael, but I swallowed my tongue. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> I started to say that, but I swallowed my tongue. Well, brother, that's the that's the youth still in me, I guess. I probably should have swallowed my tongue and not said that. <laughs> Do you ever read uh, William Huntington's Naked Bow of God? Uh-huh. I have not. Yes, sir. Naked Bow of God. We reprinted that years ago, and it is the Lord's dealings with those who persecuted him. Mm. Yeah. Oh, now, yeah. Some of them he that. brought yeah. to repentance, and some of them he struck them down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of it's just almost frightening to, to yeah. see the hand of God in their you know, the demise. And yeah. others almost rejoice. You'd want to rejoice because of the hand of God and their deliverance. It, uh, in my early ministry, struggling with truth and dealing with people, truly learning about depravity. I mean, mm -hmm. I believed it, but truly learning about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't even like to talk about what happened to some of those people because it, it sounds like it's made up. It, it just almost in my mind sounds unbelievable. So I kind of keep quiet about it. I just say the Lord can deal with our enemies if he so desires in that way. Right. Mm -hmm. But he can also make your enemy fall on your neck and weep like he did Esau on Jacob. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What a God we have. Yeah, yeah, amen. That's right. That's it. Well, brothers, sisters, I'm going to get off of here. Get pretty tired again. Yeah, brother. I've enjoyed being here, visiting with you all. Good to see you. Good conversation. It was good and to I see you. That you too, brother John. And I think that the name of Lord Jesus Christ is being uplifted and Amen. proclaimed. Amen. I say, we can hope. Say, say good night to y'all. Good, good night, brother. Good night, brother. Good night. Good night. Have a good, good night's rest. Yes. Thank you. You find me out. Yes. I was never so impressed by anybody like I was your grandson. Wasn't that something? <laughs> I was so touched. I didn't know what he was going to say. And I didn't realize it was your grandson. I was yep. so touched by what he said. And it just sparked as true. Yeah. Well, he, we had him one day when he was two years old. And he kept looking up in the sky. We had a skylight and he kept looking up there and he just sat there forever and ever. And I thought, oh my God, something wrong with him. And Pete come by and what'd you say to him? I said, what are you thinking about, son? And he said, Jesus. Jesus. That's all. Then when he was like seven, he wanted to be baptized. And we talked to the uh, elder there and he said, well, you know, if he really wants to be, and he said, let me talk to him. And he said, well, he believes it. And so he said, well, when do you want to be baptized? And he said, today. And it was pouring down <laughs> rain. And we said, well, why don't we wait until it's not raining? And he said, well, we're going to get wet anyway. Yeah, he said, Papa, you said if I asked Papa <laughs> the church, I could be baptized. I said, well, <laughs> let's go Thank home and get man. some clothes. And guess what? When we come back to the creek down there, it quit raining. <laughs> Yeah, he uh he had been attending a uh his mom and daddy separated and he'd been living with his uh daddy and his stepmother and they had put him in one of these uh cornerstone cornerstone churches, churches uh where they have this big gym and all the youth go over there and play on wednesday nights you know and things like that and i thought well we're gonna lose him on that one hmm. and uh I said, he'll find a little girl over there, and that'll be the end of it. They found a girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he went to Liberty uh, College, and he come back here and stay with us while he was out for Christmas and all. And we were talking, and I said, well, Liberty, they're, he said, they're very conservative, Grandma. And I said, well, does anybody up there believe like you do? And he said, uh, well, not really, but... He said, the more I talk to people, they, they getting close to it. And then he I said, well, maybe I thought the Cornerstone Church had 
He said, well, you know, they don't preach the truth. And I know that. He said, I just go there and play basketball. (laughs) 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 Thank God they, they hadn't got to him, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, I was so impressed. I was so touched. Sister, how much he still believes it? Yeah, he still believes it. Yeah, Yeah, I was so impressed. How much is your grandson like uh, Brother Pete? Uh, Personality wise, you mean that study wise or what? Just you know, just general personality. Because he made me uh, think of your husband. A, a sweet demeanor about him, a very caring demeanor. But he's 19, so you know how 19 year olds are. Oh, it's yeah. It's hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> he's going oh. in the Army Reserves in September. He's got to be gone for uh, six months. And uh, mm-hmm. we'll see mm-hmm. what that Army does to him. <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm worried about that, but I shouldn't worry mm-hmm. because if he's chosen, he's chosen. There's nothing that's going to mess that up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, we oh, still yeah. have we still have our little fleshly worries about things. Oh, sure, we yeah. all do. Yeah, yeah. one yeah. one time we was having a three day meeting over there. We had elders from all over the country there, and uh, our pastor, or uh, Elder Ralph Taylor, was speaking at the time. And here goes our grandson. He's about five years old, and I was step. I got out of the seat to get him. And a couple of those elders caught me and said, leave him alone. Oh, said, if he's got something to say, we want to hear it. So he goes up in a stand where Elder Taylor was speaking and he looked at him and said, Timmy, you got something to say? And he said, amazing grace. And then he turned around, walked back down, come on back down and sat down. (laughs) And a lot of the churches would frown on that but you know y'all brother cliff and them mentioned it earlier out of the mouth of babes you know these things come and uh, how do you know when god's dealing with somebody a a four-year-old sitting in the floor looking up and you ask him what he's thinking about and he said jesus my goodness that ain't something that their little mind can comprehend it had to be put in there Hey Amen. I, I, know, I don't know if you people know, but Elder Beebe and Brother Lackey should back me up, went before the church when he was 10 years old. Mm-hmm. And there you go. Received, right? Yep. Yeah. That's correct. So there's really no age limit to the Lord's people. No. No. Nope. Eight or 80. My oldest daughter up. went up when she was 10. Uh, and I, I hadn't even been baptized yet, but she went up and asked for a home in the church and, uh, they were going to baptize her. And I had been feeling the conviction. I knew I'd been baptized twice and I said, but I ain't been baptized right. So I said, okay, I want to be baptized right. <laughs> Amen. So we baptized together, but she was 10 years old. And then, uh, I don't know, charity was. She had a child there, didn't she? She had grown. Yeah. yeah, Matthew was probably, what, eight, nine? I think so. Yeah, but uh, thanks be to God, if nothing changes, they all are really true believers in this. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, Starlet is one of my biggest, greatest believers, and she calls me down on a lot. Uh <laughs> But it's a pleasure to know that, you know, I didn't do it. I really didn't teach them anything. Uh, it, it had to be of the Lord. And that makes Amen. me feel better. Because I didn't want to press any of this on my children. Mm-hmm. You know, but. Let, let me ask y'all something. And, and you may have experienced it too. When we first got started with the old Baptist over there in the early 80s. And there were people that was had been corn for years and were there every meeting that we had when we went to the, the three churches and uh, we thought there's members. And then one by one at a time, one of them would ask for a home and they'd been going there all their life. And one gentleman, he asked for a home and when he baptized him, he said, my goodness, I've been waiting 50 years for this. Mm. 
but they had attended and their name just won't on the earthly roll, but they were dear brethren and sisters. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I could see the fruits of the spirit in them if I seen anything at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sir. Yeah, I've known some like that uh, <laughs> as well. I, I yep. tell you what, to me, there's nothing more frightening or hasn't been than trying to deal with a, a, a child in the matters of, of the Lord. Yeah. I fear sometimes uh, making statements to persuade them one way or the other, and that's not my intent. Uh, my daughter, my, my sweetest daughter, she made a profession when she was about nine years old, and I questioned her, and we baptized her. Uh, she still believes a lot of truth, but she acknowledges that she doesn't really have an experience. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 and well, then I have some others that didn't seem to mount much. They, they're pretty faithful and hold to the truth. And like I said, uh, my youngest one, she's probably the sweetest, kindest uh, child we have. And uh, she'll tell you right out, I, I would just fool that I'm not a Christian. Uh, I don't argue whether one way or the other. Right. Uh, no, you can't do that. But that's no. fearful. To be. That's uh, a fearful place to be at. Yeah. I, the Lord had to teach mine because um, I taught them at home, and we used the Bob Jones. And one thing they all said: please don't order that Christian curriculum. <laughs> and I said, why? And they said, because you know what it's going to be. And I said, what? And they said, it's complete Armenianism. We're not going to do those books. And I said, I'm not ordering those books. And so then I went to a Mennonite, which didn't have, you didn't have to order the religious books. And uh, they loved that. They said, you know, it had maybe a Bible verse at the end of something. And it would say, pray before you do your test. And my oldest daughter, she said, I don't pray so much. And it don't do me no good. So I ain't going to pray for this one. <laughs> so they just, they learned it on their own because I couldn't teach them. You know, they would, they had to be taught by God because, I, you know, I would say, well, you shouldn't have done that. And they said, why? I said, because you shouldn't have done that. And they'd say, well, it was predestinated. And I said, whoa, 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 we're not going to hide behind predestination. <laughs> and they said, well, is it the truth or is it not? <laughs> I said, okay, let's just do something else. <laughs> Uh, so you get caught up in it and, and they can let you know and mine was always calling me down I, I didn't want to go to the beach with my mother because she was older and I knew she wouldn't watch them and I said don't want to go to the beach and all four of them kids said mama if we're going to die we're going to die right here in this house because we're going to die on that beach <laughs> well you can't argue with that <laughs> what do you do <laughs> Mm -hmm. They had to be taught of the Lord. Brother, Brother Cliff, he is holding up a picture there. What was that? I I just got that uh, today. Uh, my wife brought it down. How many people know who them? Let me see. I was just testing. It. Uh, Brother and Dirks. Brother Dirks. Yep. And Cliff. <laughs> Mm. I, 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 hung, I hung it up there on the wall, but I thought it's a, uh, I, I think, think a lot about Chet and uh, we had a good uh, relationship. And, uh, anyway, um, not to worship a man, but um, your pictures. somebody speaks to your heart and knows what you're going to say. And because the Lord dealt with him the same as he dealt with me. And mm. over, it, there's, there's a beauty to that that you can't write in a, in a novel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's true. And uh, that's what that old uh, old preacher they were talking about on that Welsh that Welsh uh, revival thing. His sermon was, "Let us pray." <coughs> Everybody's all praying. Wouldn't that be something that people just start praying? I've never really been in a place like that, but um, maybe someday the Lord will let me live long enough to. Uh, to enjoy that and i don't know how it fits in any theology or anything like that but uh, i know that Paul cliff was in his in him salvation armies preaching and carrying on like that with that people and uh, 
there are many to the core, I'm sure. But um, when the folks get together and they, uh, I would never give an altar call because I just never was led to do that. But I'd go down back. I says, folks, I got, I got to go pray. I'd go to the back of the room and get down on my knees and pray. And I'd look up and there'd be men standing around me. And I'd say, what are you doing here? I, I shouldn't have said that, but when you're praying, sometimes you, you, ain't, you ain't the most civil person in the world. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. And one guy said to me, he says, Mr. He said, I want to pray with you because you act like God's your friend. You're talking like he's your friend. He said, ain't no preachers ever say that or act like that. And I said, well, you know, Lord Jesus Christ is my friend. And of course, they strike up a thing on the piano. Uh, what a friend we'll have in Jesus. I guess you know that hymn. But that's okay. <laughs> but uh, it, it's surprising to me that uh, when the Lord's there, uh, and I, uh, Brother Lackey and I talked, uh, I think, a little bit about this. Um, somebody going to come and join the church, want a church home. I've seen all that, you know, kind of thing. There's only one way to, for a man, to, for me, to, I'm going to say for me to join a church. I'm going to get down on my hands and knees and we'll get together in prayer. The Lord will decide who's right or wrong on it. Now, that, that's my personal belief, but. I know that don't flush with a lot of folks, but there's stuff happening in prairies. You can't, there ain't, there ain't nobody can write a book on it. Mm -hmm. And you can't explain it. It's the hand of the Lord. And I may be deceived as the next guy down the road, but that's what I believe. I'm going to stick with her. And a, and a good, a good, good session of prayer was a man or two, or maybe a whole bunch of you. Uh, you can't beat that. The Lord reveals his hand in ways you just can't, can't, can't imagine, at least to me. But uh, I've been accused of being heaven, too heavenly minded. I'd be no earthly good. So don't listen to me. <laughs> I, I know the Antioch church, when the Lord said, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul, the work for unto I have called them, it says after that, the church prayed and laid their hands on them. Mm -hmm. so they had a scene mm -hmm. of prayer. Mm -hmm. Indeed, they did. Uh, it's a good thing to consider, I do believe. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, the Lord's always put me with a praying with a bunch of people that uh, don't even know hardly. But that's his that's his way. So, mm -hmm. well, brother, I think it's about time we. In this, let's see here. Yep, it's almost 10 o'clock. My, mm -hmm. where does the time go? Mm -hmm. Brother Robert, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a request for the next Zoom meeting. Go ahead. Uh, that which you wrote down today about Colossians chapter two. Yeah. I'd like to deal with that. I'd like to hear the brethren's thoughts on what those words mean. All right, we could do that. What, what That's was the picture verses? at the Delaware Association. It that picture is at the Delaware Association at uh, Broad Creek Church in about 1902. I got the same one here. Oh, what's that other one? Oh, is that, that what you look at? Yeah. Oh, not, okay. That's that's the Delaware Association at Broad Creek. Now, I don't know what that other one is. Uh, that, I can't see it. Uh, this is Association of uh, Pig River, 1934. 1934. John Pete Helms probably in there somewhere. I got a list of all their names on a sheet of paper over here. Yeah. Uh, Elder Helms. And you say this other one was when? Delaware Association about 1904. I'll look it up to be sure. I've got a list of all of them too. Okay. Um, um Silas Duran in the middle with the with the sideburns. With the mutton chops. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me see that. Well, I'm that's, a door. that's Silas Duran. And that's how how I'm dating it, because he died uh about the time of World War One. 
when he died. And so he's, he's an elderly man. That's one of the last pictures I know of of him. That was the same picture. Well, we don't have a list of uh, all those people. All right, I'll get you a list of all of them because you've, okay. you've got Elder Francis and Elder Hardy from North Carolina, L.H. Hardy. Um, I don't remember who all that. Elder Fenton's in that one, I believe. And um, uh, Dr. Coulter from Philadelphia, I believe he's in that one. So, yeah, I got, I got the list. Okay. And can fix you right up. All right. The, um, um, I have to get my favorite one out. My favorite one is is Elder Coulter and his wife, and Elder Carr and his wife. Okay. On the boardwalk in Ocean City in about 1915. Oh, no. wow! <laughs> in front of. Um, in front of Tremper's Ice Cream Parlor, which is still there in wow. Ocean City, in the same place where wow. they were. But it was a, it's a picture of taken by a, a street photographer um, there uh, of those four. Brother Frank Holland, when he was uh, just, a, I don't even think he was going to school. Um, Remembered hearing Elder Coulter preach at Snow Hill. And when when you see which one he is, he's got a long white beard, real white hair. And he was medical doctor in uh, in uh, Newark, Delaware area. Okay. And uh, of course he worked inside. And his skin, uh, brother, brother Frank used to say, I was just fascinated by him because I couldn't tell where face in me ended and beard began <laughs> he was white he's the whitest man i ever saw oh, no. brother, frank, brother frank of course was grew up amongst farmers down there on the eastern shore working outside now and, and uh, so that was uh that was uh, quite the quite the thing for him elder uh, bf coulter he's buried at Wells Tract, though he never served the church. Wow. He lived near there. And, uh, hey, Brother Wayne, what was that scripture verse that you was wanting to uh, talk about next week? It's in, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, uh, especially 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers to make a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. What, where, and when? What, where, and when? Yeah, I still got it wrote down. I've got it okay. right here. <laughs> if we could look at that maybe in the next Zoom meeting, I'd appreciate it. I'd like to hear the brother's thoughts on it. All right, y'all give that some thought. And we'll, Lord willing, take a look at it. Colossians 2, see what you think about it. I've had thoughts on it over the years, but I'm not sure I agree with myself. <laughs> Behind him? Yeah. He's asleep. All right. Brother, All right. I'll leave you a good night to everybody. Yes. Good night, everybody brother. Good, good night. Brother, brother. Good, good night. night. We'll good night, everyone. See y'all, Lord willing, next week. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night.